Howdy everyone, this is Locked Nuts, and you're watching a map tour of Shire Farm by Flusty94. Hopefully you'll stick around to see what happens. Howdy, 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 how are you guys doing today? Oh my goodness, I tell you what, I tell you what, today we get to go on a map tour of Shire Farm by Flusty94. This little bad mamma jamma is 287.64 megabytes to download and is very, very cross-platform friendly. Now, this map is based off of the Cotswold region or Cotswold area uh, in the UK, so you have that going for you. Now, this, like all other map tours, we are starting off with on new farmer mode. That way you guys know what you get when you do start off on new farmers mode. So without further ado, let's take a look at your equipment. All right, everyone, and here is your equipment. There is quite a bit of it, so we're going to try and get through this as fast and efficiently as possible. And it is very Classy, as you will see here, small tractors, you start off with one tractor, medium tractors, you start off with two medium class tractors, and then to top things off, you have one large class Axion 960, not too bad at all. Harvesters wise, you start off with the class Triton 750, and that does come along with a class uh, grain header, and it does have its own, you guessed it, class header trailer. Coming back up here, forage harvesters, we see something different here in the Crone Big X. That's not too shabby. And that does come with two headers that goes along with it. One for chopping up your grains and whatnot, and then the easy flow for going ahead and getting your grass. Um, coming over here to mowers, you do have the Crone Big M mower. Not too shabby at all. Wheel loaders. There we are, Kloss, Tri Trideon 1511, not too shabby, and a telehandler, Kloss Scorpion 1033. Those do come with, the wheel loader does come with silage forks, and the telehandler comes with the universal bucket, pallet forks, and bale forks. Coming back up here, we'll go over to cars. Oh, no Kloss right there. We do have one lizard pickup truck, and then one John Deere for bumming around trailers you have one flegal trailer and one crampy half pipe trailer uh plows you have one coverlin eco mat plow cultivators you start off with one lemkin cultivator cedars you start off with one coon cedar and it does have the exterior tank planters one lemkin ezrit nine planter and that does come with an exterior tank as well fertilizer spreaders you start off with the breedel k165 and that does do both lime and fertilizers so that's pretty darn slick slurry tanks you start off with one legal slurry tank forage wagons here it comes back again the class cargos 9500 forage wagon Bailers, the Quadrant 5 300 FC, so you got that going for you. Bale loaders, you do have one automatic bale loader. I like to call these mechanical auto loading trailers. And getting over here to low loaders, you do have one Bremer low loader. And to finish everything off, you have one, two, three, four weights, two of which are cloths. So as you guys can see, you do start off with quite a bit of stuff here, and you will definitely be a class act. So let's go ahead and take a look at that map. And here is the map. As you can see, there is not a straight line among them, or I should say very few straight lines. Pretty much all the fields are waving right back at you, so you got that going for you. Um, you do have your cluster of the main farm right here, and as we'll take a look at just a second here, um, the main farm is kind of spread out a bunch, but you do have a bunch of production facilities on the map. There are a couple locations where I would say that are halfway starting areas. You do have this, which like I said, I'll show you that in a little bit. This is one of the starting farm areas. This is where you actually start. But there are two other locations I found on here where you could possibly go ahead and start your game up. Uh, there is one farm right here and then one area right here, which we'll take a look at that right now. 
This area right here, this is all one little plot. So it comes in at $158,000. And then there is this one coming in at $183,000. Now this one right here, there really isn't a ton of room. There's kind of houses up in this area, not real too much space to put anything. But you could take out some of these trees in this area and possibly start your farm up that way. It choice is totally yours. I just want to let you guys know that those are the options. But this right here is the starting farm that you'd end up getting here. Uh, as you can see, it does come along with all of this stuff up here, the BGA included. So if you do want to buy the BGA, you have to actually come over here and physically purchase the land, which unfortunately you cannot buy this stuff all separate. You have to buy it like this. So Kind of keep that in mind as you're going ahead and moving forward. Now going ahead and taking a look at all of this stuff in here, you do have quite the variety of prices on all of these fields here. But the absolute cheapest one comes in at field 33, and that's $64,000. Right behind that is field 55 at 97000 So kind of keep that in mind. Those are the low-end side of things. High-end side of things your starting farm and all the surrounding area that goes along with it. And that comes in at $925,000. Very, very expensive. Um, looking right past that, which would be the second most expensive, or I'd kind of consider it the most expensive on here, is field 40 and 41. And that comes in at $492,000, so a little under half a million. Um, I know it's a lot, but I consider this more reasonable versus this. If you're starting from start from scratch, you don't have this cash. So this just is not going to happen for you. Kind of keep that in mind. But like I said, looking around on the map here, the prices really aren't outrageous. They're kind of decent for the groupings of the fields and all that stuff that goes along with it. So it's not crazy. But, you know, with the starting farm being so expensive, it is what it is. It'd be a good goal to try and shoot for. Um, but with that being said, guys, let's get down on the ground and take a look at this map from the first person point of view. All right, guys. So here we are taking a look at one, two, three, four class tractors. You betcha. Like I said, guys, lots of class action happening here. Well, three tractors and a harvester. The fourth one's over there. So uh, lots of lots of class vehicles here. One of the things I want to do really quick is I want to turn the map on in the corner of the screen so that you guys can kind of follow along with me as I go. Now, when you do start this game off, uh, depending on what game mode you're on, I should say, it does not matter what game mode you start with. You do get all of this equipment no matter what. You don't have access to all of the farm or the the animal pens, but you do have all of the vehicles. The house is not yours, so you kind of have to buy the land to get access to all that stuff. But like I said, you do start off with all the equipment, and that does make things very, very doable. So if you want to go ahead and get rid of that stuff and just really start with zero, you have to sell it all. And after selling it all, you do have quite the penny in your pocket, but there is also a lots and lots of stuff here for you to go ahead and do. Um, let's quick take a one little peek at this. Let's pop on out here and see what we can go ahead and sell really quick, which... I'm going to go ahead and take a peek at this. You can sell pretty much everything here. Uh, all these are nice placeables for going ahead and rocking and rolling. Even like the, the little displays here, not the displays, the decorations. You can go ahead and get rid of absolutely everything on here. So if that's what you're more into wanting to do, go for it. It's all, all capable of getting rid of. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and kind of wander back around over here. We're going to find the truck. And at that point, we're going to start rocking and rolling, driving around down here. So there are 100 collectibles here on this map. Um, they all are a thousand bucks a piece from what I was finding out when I was doing my little wander around to begin with. Uh, let's hop in here and get ourselves rocking and rolling. So if that's what you're into, go for it. Uh, they're there. They're available. I know some maps recently we've been getting have not had any of that stuff on there uh, other ones have so it really is hit or miss this one does have the collectibles on it let's go ahead and drive on out the main driveway here now one of the things i want to let you guys know is that on my map tours i usually don't stay on the roads at all i drive off-road cross country 
just about all the time. But I just kind of wanted to show you the entrance to your farm right here because it is really, really neat. It's got a nice view overlooking everything. Um, kind of dangerous though, kind of dangerous. I've only been hit once pulling out of here when I've been kind of goofing around looking at things, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, but all in all, it really is kind of a nice little landscape. As you can see here, we're cutting across right now. As you guys can see here, you do have some hills, some slight elevation changes as we're driving through here. It's not terrible, but as you can see, there are some pretty hefty dips. You are going to want to go ahead and probably want to look at upsizing your horsepower just a hair to be able to compensate for this. It's not undoable, it's not unreasonable, but it definitely makes it makes sense to give yourself just a little bit more horsepower unless you're fine with it and you're okay having your stuff struggle a little it's all up to you i wouldn't worry about it either way but like i said you're gonna probably want to upsize your horsepower just a hair now one of the big things that is focused on this map is the fact that the map is set up for doing lots of silage you can tell by all those grass fields that we drove through over there um, it really is, like I said, set up for doing silage as we're coming through here. Um, now, depending on how you want to go about doing it, let's go like this. So you guys can kind of take a peek here. Uh, silage prices on this particular map, considering it, it's focusing on it, it's not bad. It's not bad. The prices aren't too bad at all. You can come up here. It says the highest price right now or average price is $341 showing the current price. The Shire Grain. $434. So if this does stand true and it does stay high, the price on this map for silage is actually going to be really, really good. It definitely makes doing silage here uh, a definite money maker. Probably more money than you're going to be able to make on a lot of the other maps out there. Um, and with that being said, I want to come up here to this upper farm location because this is part of that big starting farm. Uh, as we come up over here, you do see that there is a nice little setup up here. Um, when I go ahead and was doing my initial drive around on this map, uh, I was taking a look at a lot of this stuff, realizing that pretty much all the farms are all grouped together here. Let's go ahead and grab this really quick so you guys can see. All right, thousand bucks. There you go. Um, as I'm going ahead and driving around up here, I was thinking about how, what I said at the beginning. This map is a cross-platform friendly map. Now, how would you go about doing that cross-platform on here? Or I should say multiplayer, because that's essentially what it affects. Doing multiplayer on this map, I think, would work out pretty darn slick if you were to go ahead and, let's say, you have one main farm, but you guys wanted to kind of operate separately, uh, almost as if it were a co-op. This would probably be a pretty darn good map for that. Because, like I said, the main farm is so darn big, it takes up tons and tons of farmland, or at least starting farm locations, that that might not be the worst scenario to do. To start off with, you know, you're all working together, you're all putting your money together, but you do have cash set aside that you're, you're kind of doing stuff independently, is I guess is a good way to say it. So kind of keep that in mind when you're out here rocking and rolling doing a couple things that you want to do that you can get out here you can rock you can roll and you guys can go ahead and work together that's just what i'm seeing i could be wrong i could i could be way wrong but i wanted to give you guys like my little insight on that so let's come up here and take a look at the production area <laughs> it's all kind of jammed in here uh but you know what i kind of like this it gives you more of the map to be able to go ahead and do your farming this here it gives you the opportunity it's a one-stop shop sort of scenario doesn't matter what you do you drive up here there you go this is where you're going to go ahead and do your well the majority of your production stuff um let's head back on out over here and as you can see here there is no collision on this uh, the hedges right here. So if you guys are going ahead and you need to get stuff up and around and over here, it's really not looking all that bad. The only thing that you guys are really going to have to worry about is those stone hedges, those stone walls. Those are going to be the real, the real hindrances on your gameplay. You're going to be able to get through these areas with 
larger equipment because, like I said, I'm driving through here. You're fine. You're not going to smash into anything. And even in the areas where our where our house is or our starting farm location, the traffic's there, but it's not terrible. Like I said, I did get hit, but I also wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I was just running out there and smashing and crashing into things, reckless abandon. Um, so again, here we go. Here's another little area over here, and this is part of that that conglomeration, that major part right there. Uh, definitely going to have to watch yourself coming down there. There could be some issues, but other than that, it's not too shabby. This is what I'm talking about right here. This is the obstacles that you're going to end up running into because you can't go through that. You can't go through that. That's going to be the biggest obstacle that you have to face when it comes to driving around in this area. It's not going to be too much of the narrow roads. The traffic, like I said, isn't terrible, but you should be able to get through here. With that being said, though, you may still want to look at getting a header trailer. Uh, we're going to turn right here. We don't want to go that way. Uh, you're still probably going to want to look at getting yourself a header trailer so that you're not causing eh, too many issues. There's no reason to make it harder on yourself than it already could potentially be. That's kind of what I'm getting at. That's what I'm saying. Uh, definitely want to make sure you're skinny going down the roads, but you still can get through with the larger equipment. Now, one of the things I do want to get over here and take a look at is the forestry area because it is kind of neat how it's set up. It is segregated by itself. It has nice roads coming through here. Nice, tall, big, straight trees, which is very, very nice for when you're going ahead and cutting stuff down and selling the logs. Flip side of that, it's not thick in here at all. At all. If you're a hardcore forestry guy, this is going to take you absolutely zero time to get through, and it's not going to be much of anything. So if you are looking to go ahead and do a little bit of forestry while you're doing your farming or you're doing a little bit of forestry to supplement your farming, however you want to look at it, you're probably most definitely going to want to go ahead and replant stuff as soon as you're cutting it down. Maybe even preemptively start planting trees back up as you get a little bit farther along the way here. It's just what's going to end up happening. You're, you're going to need to go about doing that. Um, so as we kind of shuffle on over this way, you can kind of see you do have some of these roads over here. And this is what I'm getting at. It is, it, it, you do are going to run into some spots that are a little bit hilly. Now, if you are working with a little bit smaller tractor and you have a slide side plow on or a side cutter on, or even a front and side cutter, these hills could potentially kick your rear. You're really going to have to look at how you go about mowing unless you do decide to upsize your horsepower just a hair. Like I said, it may, I'd suggest it, but it's not 100% necessary like it is on some of the other maps that you'll go ahead and face. Um, so this area over here, this is the field 40 and 41, most expensive area that I kind of see as we go through it. Um, and that's just what I said. This just just what I'm seeing. It's not the most expensive area, but it's the most expensive area other than the starting farm. So with that being said, guys, I think I'd like to take a second here, fly up into the sky, and get a bird's eye view of what this map looks like from up above. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and fly up into the sky and take a look at this thing from up above. Now, like I said, guys, there is not a straight line out here. It is really, really actually pretty slick at when you come up here and take a look at it. Uh, it really does show you the waviness of the whole thing. It's not, it's looking off in the horizon, it's not crazy. It's not crazy, crazy elevation changes, but it's enough. It's wavy, it's rolling. It really is pretty darn cool to go ahead and look at. I, I definitely do like this. Uh, I do want to come over here and take a peek at this area right here because this is that other uh, starting farm area that we got going on here. Uh, coming down over here, this is the one where it does have the farm set up and with a couple fields. It's not too bad, uh, at least I would say so. It really isn't too bad. You do have some room to get out here to do a little bit of rocking and rolling. Uh, at least it'll give you a good start. Now, you could possibly go ahead and put some small silos down up there. Not really sure. Doesn't appear to be too much room. But again, it, it really is kind of set up. You have to start off with two grass fields and a third arable crop. So uh, going ahead and taking a look at that, you're really setting yourself up for grass 
Uh, I don't know if you want to get a fermenting silo or if your plan is to go ahead and put a bunker there, but that would probably be a nice bet. This is that other plot of land. Like I said, it, there's some houses right here. You possibly can smash something in here, make it work, but the real bread and butter is right behind where you do have this nice little forestry area. You can cut down some of these trees and start building your farming empire. It really is up to you on what you want to do here on this map. Comment down below. Let me know where you guys would want to start. With the silage price being so high, is silage your bread and butter? Or are you going to want to go with something else? Is it going to be animals? Are you going to try... Uh, tip in your hand doing a little bit of forestry or is that not what you want to do on this one you're going to go ahead and do animals there's lots of animal locations on here lots of stuff to go ahead and do i can't believe it i love the fact that it really does give a nice little patchwork assembly going on here pretty darn neat i would have to say thumbs up on this one guys Go ahead, like I said, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about it. And if you guys are liking what you're hearing, liking what you're seeing, go ahead and smash that like button. I really would appreciate it. Help the channel out and hit that subscription. Son of a gun, it really does work out pretty slick. Turn that notification bell on and have it set to all. That way you know when this and other great videos are coming out by myself. And guys, I would have to say, go ahead and share this with somebody who likes silage. Lots and lots of sidewich or patchwork quilts i don't know it's all up to you go ahead guys share it with somebody you know who i'm talking about and until i see you out here in the fields rocking and rolling at the exact same time i gotta say it because i want to not because i have to thanks for stopping by